we're back guys it is junkyard season maddox and i are on a mission we've been looking into the whole tuning thing and software and this and that and i think i've got i'm pretty close to being able to do it so we're here we're gonna grab a couple ecus and hopefully put a tune on them and hopefully it runs huh that thing, yeah <laughs> so we will see this is what we're looking for we got a passat uh, Ooh, this is where you find your that's a come on awm motor so he's got a aug motor in his um yeah anything 1.8 t we are going to grab the ecus out of them um these have immobilizers but i think i found a way to get past the immobilizer we tuned his file with his immobilizer so i'm thinking if i take this ecu tell me if i'm wrong but if i put wipe this ecu out clean it and then just run his file in it should be a cloned ECU to his car with a tune on it. We do not want to do it to his ECU in case, you know, we do something wrong. So if we buy three or four of these and we practice and uh, hopefully we'll see. Is this a manual or a... It's auto. Auto, that's all right. It works, so. They put both files in every ECU. There'll be a manual file and an auto file right next to each other. In Winnells, you can actually, whatever file you tune, uh, you can have it automatically change both files. So we've got one here. What is that? Oh, that's the VR6 motor. But basically the ME 7.5 ECU. We need to grab a couple of them. It's been a while since we've been to the junkyard. We're kind of digging this. And me being me, I didn't bring it. I thought these were 10 millimeter bolts. So I just brought my standard, you know, set didn't have it check this out we're making it work so me 7 point oh god it works for that one's gotta run though what's up with it maybe timing belt probably we should actually look in there and see there we go i got it doesn't have anything marked saying when it was done no but i'm pretty sure that you can just clone these yeah. They don't make them easy to get out. So I was at the junkyard the other day and I found these on the ground. They're Pittsburgh, but man, what a find. And they, uh, I like to get these as long as possible. Boom. So we're going to grab all the harnesses. And if they don't charge us more, oh yeah. Be all right. Oh, yeah. Fine. There's one ECU. Bosch ME 7.5. This number is different, but I believe I don't know software number. But if I completely erase this ECU and throw his in there, it's going to be that ECU. So <laughs> I'm excited. Hopefully, we can get this tune on the car. Right, so we've got an Audi right here, and that's a AM. Where are you at? AMB. AMB code. Here's a Passat right here. What's it got? 1.8T. AWM. So that'll be a good ECU to grab. So that's a front mount intercooler right there. Yeah. Ooh. Might be have holes in it though. So what do we got here? Is that a 1.8? No. No. We got one here though. Audio. That's a 1 At 200K. So that's got a new. So that's AWM as well. So we'll be grabbing this ECU. Um, and I believe there's one out here that has red 2.0 coil packs. So we need to find that one as well. This Audi has been painted. You can see it's black. I bet that was it used this to one, be Dad. red. That was this one with the coils. Oh, I bet it was. I think it was. I saw the engine bay. It was red. Yeah. Here's a black one. Um, yeah, let's get this. ECU. It looks like it's in a different holder. So I bet you that goes to it. Right. You know, this has got Audi. All right. Um. Uh, that looks like an ME 7.5, but it's in a different. How the hell you get it out of this case? 
spare that. All right, we're gonna figure this out real quick. The damn thing's riveted in there. We're gonna have to figure this out, but it's definitely an ME 7.5 ECU. Um, drill the rivets. Heck, I have no idea. I've never seen this before. So really, this is what holds it right here. That's welded. I don't know, let's see. And then the Passat has a transverse mounted 1.8T. This has a, uh, what is it? Latitude, longitude, something oleo. Um, but I don't know. I don't know about these issues. I don't know what's different about them. Um, see like that's a AWD, but 1.8T is 1.8T, wouldn't you think? I would. Check out the mini truck. That'd be a cool thing to do on the channel. Did you find one, Maddox? 1.8T, 03 Jetta. So what engine is it? It'd be so cool to find one with an aftermarket intake on yeah, it. That's what I thought it was. Gosh. Before, I saw it in my what does that say right there? It's nothing. I'm saying nothing. Wow, that's freaking weird. That's so weird that it doesn't say anything on there. That's literally the only way you can identify. Ooh, timing belts off. That motor's junk. All right, let's go back a couple rows so we don't miss anything. <laughs> See? All right, let's go over here. Found one. Oh, it's perfect junkyard weather. Actually, what's in this Passat right here? Oh, never mind. Because I guess you can put a 2.0 head on your 1.18 and build a stroker, but I have no idea how to do it. So, you know, honestly, I have no idea how to do what I'm doing right now with the ECUs. But we're learning. I'm learning a little bit every day. And pretty soon we're going to be able to tune our own ECU and... Uh, Get away with all that. Another AWM. So let's grab this one. Man, I have missed this place. And YouTube. I'll tell you what, we are in Michigan, which is the most shut down state in America. Our Secretary of State still isn't open. Um, I have an appointment there to get Maddox's license, and it's two months out still. So buying and selling cars in Michigan. And Michigan is uh, non-existent. I mean, you can do it. If you got a dealer's license and you can mail in the titles and stuff, or you know, like Copart, you can do it by mail. But I mean, I've just, I've gone back to work. I'm working six days a week, an hour and a half from home, trying to make a bunch of money. Um, we just qualified to buy a home. We've got a bunch of money saved up. So that's where we've been. I've just, gone six days six tens for a long time um just been saving money we're our landlords actually because we rent the home we're in our landlords are actually talking about possibly selling us the home so that'd be cool uh either way we're looking because renting is just a waste of money you know it really is right here these are the good tail lights for the channels yeah the jdms um i think they only go on the glis Okay. Seriously though. Sam Smith, good CD. But yeah, so that's where we're at, man. I know I've been gone for a little while, but it's all been for good reason. And uh we're just trying to trying to move forward, man. And uh we're gonna pick up. We'll start. I I actually was gonna go buy a smashed WRX today. And I was mad that I didn't, but uh, the guy sold it last night. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. But I thought there's an 05 WRX, Cobb tuner, Cobb everything. So I was going to, you know, buy that, build it on the channel. And maybe trade it for a 350Z I was looking at. I'm still looking at. It's kind of rough, but it might be the right deal. So we'll see about that. Um, but it's good to be back. And it's good to be at the junkyard and it's good to have time uh, to actually do stuff. 
spot. We're just here looking for these ECUs and uh, we're gonna go home, open up the laptop. AWM, that's the one. Go home, open up the laptop and see, you know, what we can do. Check this out. That's the, where the water pump goes. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be doing this timing belt on this car. That's the tensioner right there. You gotta take that off, take that off, take that off. They do got cool cam gears though. Yeah. Looks aftermarket. So I wonder why that motor's here. KF3, that shows how small oh, that is. Oh, that's how small your turbo is. Holy. The Borg Warner, look at that little thing. <laughs> That thing whistles a lot for what it is. Seriously, it's weird that it can push 10 pounds of boost. Oh, it's got a little shaft play. Can you see that? Let me study yeah. the camera. Let me study it. Damn it, where are you? Yeah, it's got a little Oh, uh, yeah. Spins good, though. Yeah. But, yeah, that's a little baby right there. <laughs> actually, Maddox, take a picture of that. Yeah. So when you're... Actually, I'll have it on video. 058-145-703-J. KO3... So he is actually buying a KO4. We are putting it on that thing, which is why we're learning to tune, which is why we're doing everything we're doing today. It's gonna to be cool for him. Uh, the more he knows, the better. So yeah, let's see if we can't find a couple more ECUs. Get the heck out of here. what these people do? DA, that's another one, same one as we just, we've got three of them already. We might grab that one. And that one, and we'll have all the same ECUs, which are in. So the AWM motor and the AUG motor are all, how do you say it, together. They're in a group. So this ECU will run that motor. So no matter what, when we clone it, it's gonna be his ECU anyway, but on a different ECU. So all these numbers won't even matter. They'll be what's on his ECU. But we're gonna put a stage one on there and uh, a little bit higher boost, some anti-lag, see if we can't get some pops and bangs. Um, I want to get it on an ECU and I want to try it to see if it actually is going to work. Super budget, uh, Winnell's tuning software is free. Uh, the cable I bought was $12. I took this piece from a junkyard, made my own cable, go into the ECU via boot mode, you take the cover off, I'll show you. But, I mean, we've got, 30 bucks into this tune and uh, I'm gonna show you guys how I did it all right we've got about four or five computers now all matching numbers so that's good can't come to the junkyard and not look at the Jeeps it's been a while since I've owned one or drove one so I'm kind of missing them hard to find up here anymore with you know without being completely rusted out or messed up Speaking of Jeep, here's one right now. This one's been beat. And that's how they all look around here. Definitely buying fender flares if you're getting a Jeep under four grand. But we've got our four computers. We'll head home, fire up the laptop, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And we'll either see if the car starts or if the car doesn't start. We'll see what it does. See you back at the house. He's hungry, he's always hungry. So I've heard, and you know, some people do and some people don't, put a battery charger on your battery because when you're writing, reading, and copying your ECU, your voltage has to stay above 12. So this way we know we never ever go below 12 volts. We don't have any issues. I don't know what'll happen if we're in the middle of a write and the battery goes too low. You know, does your ECU not get written on you know who knows what happens but so we've got that set up got my laptop got the tune on here this cable right here is the Giletto or galetto uh g e or g a l l e t o something but that's the number uh, made in china 12 dollars comes with a disc i don't know of any computers with a disc anymore but this uh obd has the software in it so once you plug it in um, your computer downloads the file there's a bunch of tutorials on YouTube it's kind of uh, tricky or confusing but if you follow all the steps on YouTube videos people you'll be ready to rock um, it's not really a real file it's I'll have to show it to you then obviously my laptop charger stuff like that and then um, my 
boot mode harness. Okay, this is where I had to do a lot of research. I don't know if I filmed it or not, but we went to the junkyard, took an ECU wire harness, cut it off, got into the car, took an OBD2 harness out of a car. I wired them together. You literally only use four wires out of this thing. You can see there's one, two, three, four. And then this right here is how you get your ECU into boot mode. It's a grounding pin. So we're going to take the ECU apart, get the board out. We're going to plug it in. Um, OBD2, this cable right here plugged into the OBD2, into the computer. This plugged into the ECU. And then uh, you can see the other end of the cable. This is how I supply power to the ECU. So negative obviously on the negative battery and then I hook that on the positive battery that turns the ECU on so that it thinks your key is on in your dash um, and then that allows you to you know read the file write the file so got all that um, you can look up on Nefmodo and other sites how to build a boot mode harness you can buy them for like 60 I built mine for free because the junkyard gave me those you know clips and wires for free took this off an old battery charger but so that's my gangster boot mode harness my $12 cable uh ECU was 30 uh Winnell's ECU software free download um yeah budget Passat getting a stage one tune today so maybe we'll see if it starts two-door Passat that'd be sweet wouldn't it be like a SI Civic or something. So these are my ECUs and this is how I'm going to label them in the computer. You're supposed to find an ECU with the same numbers, but we're creating clone ECUs. So it's not gonna matter. And it's really hard to find matching number ECU, but look at this, 4B090618DA, 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 and boom. Four freaking matching ECUs in the same junkyard. It doesn't get any better than that. So, and I also cut these off. So I can make this plug, don't need it. This plug here, you can make your own boot mode harness. You pull that out, the plug pops off, and you tie into four wires. Simple. Lots of tutorials online. But so in the computer, we're gonna go with junkyard ECU one. And we're going to use this ECU today and uh, hopefully get a stage one on there. We got a stage one tune with pops and bangs and um, anti-lag. So it should make some cool noises, right? Yeah. Teaching this kid right. You can go out and spend uh, three grand on ECU titanium. Uh, ECS tuning charges way crazy prices. Uh, I think credits are six bucks on one of those sites. You have to buy eight credits to be able to um, put a tune in your ECU. So $35 ECU, $12 cable, free boot mode cable, um, free software. I think we're in it at about 60 bucks. So let's try it. All right, so we're gonna take the ECU apart. Here is the stock ECU. You can see same software number 4 bo 906018 and then obviously this number down here, who knows? These numbers have to do with the immobilizer, I guess. I, who knows? But stock ECU, I don't wanna take that one apart, open it up until I know, you know, I'm on the right track. But it's nice to have a stock ECU you can throw back in the car. And then, you know, JY ECU one. So test subject one. Let's get some screws out of it. And I'll show you that there's nothing really in these ECUs. All right. Pick up the screws, throw them in the pan. Voila. That's your ECU to your car. Okay. Now I said boot pin. When I plug this in, you have to ground out your boot pin, which is, you know, right here. So what I'll do is I'll basically turn the key on or supply power through the cable. 
and I'll touch it right here. This pin right here, and actually this square, when it, once it turns on, you hold it on there for, I think, seven to 10 seconds, and that throws the ECU in boot mode. Once it's in boot mode, it can be read and it can be written over. So that's kind of the unlock. Um, this is why you need this to bypass all the thousands of dollars worth of equipment used to get into these ECUs. You can do it for free. You just have to, you know, do your due diligence, read your forums and, you know, figure this stuff out. So we're going to go in, we're going to read this ECU real quick and uh, see what we got. This is the software, what it looks like when it comes up. Uh, you go in this list here, you can choose. I mean, it's not just Audis and VWs, anything. And basically I found mine, Audi VW 1.8T, uh, boot pin 24 flash. That's what we're going in with is boot pin. Um, this software comes in, you know, you can see English. It comes in a bunch of languages. Um, basically it's the master. So we're going to go in with that. Now I'm going to tell Maddox when to hook that positive up, which is going to fire this ECU up. I got a light right here. I haven't designed a box yet. You can basically put a key, design a box where you just turn a key, but I haven't gotten that yet. So basically I'm on boot pin 24. All right, connect it, Maddox. There, ECU's on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now take it off. ECU is still on. Now we go in here and we go in, read ECU, reading ECU. It's going to come up and it's going to tell me to save it. We're going to go junkyard ECU one, JY ECU one. We're going to save that file. Attention before you continue. Yup. Remove fuse. We got no fuses. Uh, let's see what it does. Reading ECU, start reading. Let's see if it's even connected. Yes, see that? 4%, 5%, boom. And then that's my file name. So what I'll do is I'm going to flash in my stage one shotgun pops and bangs tune that's built for this ECU. These numbers on here, basically if I erase this completely, throw this whole ECU on this board, this should be the software. It should just be a clone. See, I'm still learning. So we're going to see, but I'm going to save the original file. And worst case scenario, I just go back in, wipe it clean, put JYC EC, or JYECU1 back on there. That ECU is still good. No harm, no foul. We haven't ruined anything. And then I go back to the drawing board and I learn more. But I think we got it. I'm actually excited. I want to get this thing written on and I want to get it back in here. And if the car starts, we did it. If the car doesn't start, then checksums and stuff like that don't line up. But I've just ordered the whole complete Kess and K-Tag setup for 200 or 194 bucks. It's a, uh, a clone software that you can read and write ECUs on boats, motorcycles, trucks, tractors, cars. I will be able to get into any ECU. Hellcat van, maybe we'll turn the van up, see what it does, I don't know. Maybe we'll do a motorcycle, I don't know. But I'm excited about it, that'll be here in the mail. So if this file doesn't work out, the K tag already or automatically corrects your checksums. So when I run the file back in, it'll correct the checksums and no matter what, you know, it'll work. Because ECUs, what it does is it turns on, it counts all the checksums and if that number's off one, it won't start. So that's, you know, checksums is a big thing. Hard to do with um, software. So long story, you gotta do your research. Check that little whip out. Woo! That's a Honda Fit, probably K20. All right, so back to it. To my home screen, I've got it on there. So now what we're going to do is open a file. We need to get a file on here. Let's find our... Uh, there it is, Winnells BW Stage 1 Strong Shotgun. 
So, hopefully it's strong shotgun. Okay, now, you see it? Sorry if I'm shaking, I'm doing this on my phone. Boom, got my file in there, right? So now what we're gonna do, is we're going to try to download this file. Writing ECU, remove fuse number 11, whatever. We don't have fuses because the ECU is out of the car. We're bench flashing. Okay, well, if it writes, we're on the right track. If it doesn't write, I need to do about eight hours more reading. <laughs> Erasing, oh, it's starting. So erasing ECU, start writing. Dang, it's actually gonna freaking work. So the ECU is actually out of this car right now, sitting on the bench. We've got the other one from the junkyard. It's kind of a cluster, got wires everywhere, but you really only need these two cables and a power supply. If you had a 12 volt power supply, you wouldn't have to do all of what I'm doing, but. We're backyard mechanics, and we're going to figure this out. Kid's excited. Oh, he's got some rotiforms for this car downstairs. So you'll have to check back. We'll do a video. He'll reveal those. He got them for $300. He bought some wheels for $300, traded them for these rotiforms, completely made out like a bandit. He must have learned something along the way. So those rims go for $700 apiece. He's got them downstairs. Uh, this thing's gonna look awesome. So we'll do a video on that. It's gonna look sweet. And then he picked a color. He wants like, uh, you know, Eleanor, uh, you know, like that, like the Eleanor Mustang, the um, the dark gray, whatever you call that. What is it? Gunmetal. Gunmetal gun gray. So we might, gunmetal gray, rotiforms, tune. <laughs> we'll see. Where are we at? 51%. 52% it's actually writing so I'll check back with you now once it gets to about a hundred a thing pops up that's not in English <laughs> I don't know what the hell it says but I did figure out that it says turn your key off for 10 seconds and I watched on YouTube and nobody really does it no your key's not we're on the bench so your car your key won't do anything but it says turn it off wait and then it does this weird thing here, but nobody actually turns it off. So once that does what it does, turn on the dashboard. Okay, closing ECU, okay. And then I think it's done. It says closing ECU, okay. But I don't think it actually does anything after that. It doesn't come up saying you are done or anything. It just, it's done, so. Now, let's get this thing, see if it starts the car. Screws back in. If this does work, we write stage one, shotgun pops and bangs on it, and we have a stage one ECU. And then we can go for stage two. And then what we'll have is multiple ECUs, stock, stage one, stage two, and as he goes, he can plug and play with ECUs. You won't be able to use them for other cars because obviously we cloned this ECU, which the immobilizer um, is on the ECU. So I believe it's on this ECU now. It should start. But uh, I am looking into, I did just download some uh, key immobilizer um, destroyer program. Might be a virus for my computer, might not be. <laughs> I'm kind of starting to think it might be, but it it's a key generator and it'll actually find the immobilizer and turn it off. So working on that, not there yet. It's all so very confusing. I can fix anything mechanical if I can put my hands on it, but trying to picture how electronics work and what needs to happen and write code, absolutely not. So let's get this in, see what happens. It's crossed, I hope this thing starts. If it starts, I think we did it. Oh, try again. No, we didn't get past the immobilizer yet. All right, try again, try to start it. That's all it does, you can't hold it longer? Oh, I can. Try it. All right, let's go to plan B, try again. All right, back on the bench. Now, this time, what I'm going to do is when it tells me to turn the key off for 10 seconds, I'm gonna have them Pull that, turn it off. We're gonna to count to 10 and we're gonna turn it back on through boot mode. And then I'm gonna press okay. See if that does anything. 
um, because it never really did uh, exit ECU or close out ECU. So a lot of guys build a box and they got a toggle switch. They can do key on for dashboard and they can do power to ECU. So I'm kind of just doing this. Uh, we're going to try it. So let me get this on here. Boot pin. By the time we're done, though, you will know how to do this. Okay, so there's our ECU pin. I'm on there. Go for it, Maddox. Catastrophe averted. So my ground, I had a bad connection. I peeled it back apart. But basically, if you look, you can kind of see which wires all go to power. That powers up your ECU and a few other things through there and then obviously the negative came undone inside the tape i'm gonna redo that we're gonna try it again that was scary holy cow like we messed up or something went wrong but well it hasn't worked yet so let's just see what we can do got it back together um comes on now rewired a couple things so bootleg harness you know it is what it is we're gonna have issues here and there but i did buy every ecu i bought i bought a whole new plug so we've got four of them bada boom bada bing so now we know we're connected let's go ahead and download our file open a file uh where is it Right here. All right. Now we're going to try to download it again. Download file. Okay. Last time, Max, he uh, cycled the key once. So I don't know if that did anything. Voltage drop or whatever. So we're going to try it again. See what it does. All right. So the immobilizer is messing with us. Now, there are things I can do to... Sorry about that. My phone died, and uh, I put it into charge, so I went ahead and put the car back together. As you can see, we couldn't get it started. I think we're stuck on the mobilizer or the throttle body issue. I ordered a cable to cycle the throttle body. Sometimes when you put a tune in a VW, the ME 7.5 computer, um, you have to readapt the throttle body. I've seen it... Uh, many many times so it could be that it could be the immobilizer but i can't really tell until i get the right equipment i have the cable coming in a couple days i also ordered kess and k tag uh was 190 bucks for both of them that is thousands of dollars worth of equipment for 190 bucks it's an exact clone it does the exact same thing um unfortunately with k tag and kess you can't be online when you use it otherwise you will get kicked um, but I mean it, I can go into the immobilizer. I can do a lot of other things. We'll do a video. I will show you. Um, but I put the original ECU back in the car. I can show you it starts and I could have used the original ECU to do this. You just have to make sure you save your original file. And you know, if I put a tune file in here and it doesn't start, all I have to do is, you know, rethrow in the original file and it's like nothing happened but as far as tuning the car for 30 bucks you know i'm learning i think it was a success because we watched me take the ecu files off the ecu save them to a computer so they can be manipulated and then uh take other files and put them into the ecu it didn't start but the actual Taking the file off and putting the file in did work. That is a huge step forward and we're a lot closer. Uh, so we just gotta, you know, I gotta start reading on the immobilizer. I gotta start learning a little bit more. To me, a success, um, you know, we had hoped it would start and it may look like a failure, but when you're doing this, you're learning a little bit at a time. You're learning, you know, you just, you gotta learn it. I can show you the car still starts. she's loud this turbo though i can't get over the turbo in this car
silencer for it. But it starts, it runs fine, and uh, we'll just keep moving forward, you know? It's all we can do. Have I showed you guys this thing yet? Maddox bought this really, really, really cheap. Um, it was in three boxes when we bought it, completely disassembled. Uh, we had everything off the frame, cleaned every bolt, put it all back together, ordered new parts. I thought it was just a, you know, regular old pit bike. And uh, turns out after doing research, the G2 is uh, one of the top three race bikes in the world. They had Pitster Pro, BBR, and then G2. Um, this thing came with the best of the best suspension, uh, that motor. People spend thousands of dollars taking their KLX 110 to, to turn it into that, and this thing will spank it. Um, they usually go for, I think they were about three grand brand new. This one's an 08, the last year they were made, and uh, it's still worth 2,500. People are giving them offers all the time. They're super rare, they're super popular. In the pit bike world, that's the uh, one of the top three bikes, and he bought it for, I think, 200 bucks. Um, his buddy's got another one that I'm trying to talk him out of, and we could have two of them, but Maddox is happy. He must have learned something along the way because, you know, you see trash, you, you can turn it into treasure. If you can see past it all, you know, you're limitless. But I appreciate you for watching. Uh, we didn't get it this time. We will get it next time. Um, and you know what? Whatever I learn, I'll show you guys. I am looking at, you know, buying more cars and we'll see what we get into. I don't know what I'm going to do. I haven't planned anything and uh, we'll just, we'll just go with the flow. That's all we can do. Uh, appreciate you watching. Peace.